Cheers, how you do, buckaroos? And without further ado, I just decided to open one uh, for a lot of reasons. I actually had seven bottles that I hadn't opened yet that I picked up uh, over the last few months. Sometimes I pick them up and, and stash them. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, Broken Barrel Whiskey, limited edition, the cast of Amontillado, a collection of American whiskey finished with Amontillado cask staves at 110 proof artisanal alchemy it says distilled in Indiana bottled in Las Vegas bottled by infused spirits group and that's not unusual you know uh, you see that a lot in whiskey. A lot, of, a lot of spirits are bottled in Kentucky, a lot in Indiana, and then slap the label on them. Um, so some are contract distilled, some are just, uh, you know, in need of a lamp. But anyway, I'm not sure what the story is with this altogether. I just thought it was interesting and thought I'd pick it up. Certified Seth Benham uh, Barrel Breaker. Um, made with vengeance and malice it, again uh bottle number 3307 out of 6600 it is 110 proof yeah i was kind of curious about it i never heard of it so i figured what the hell they had three different flavors in this particular whiskey this was the one that really stood out to me though so i thought i'd try it i've got an ounce and a half poured neat but i'm gonna set it down and drink an ounce and a half on the rocks first before i get too much water in here so on the rocks, typically I kind of compare the two, and I'm kind of trying to avoid that. I'm going to focus just on this one for now. My nose is a little challenged. I'm going to admit that right away. I've been fighting, uh, I feel like I'm fighting off a sinus infection. I don't know that for an absolute fact, but I've, you know, I've dealt with this for a, uh, a large portion of my life, so I know when they're coming on. And a lot of it's allergies going on, so my nose is a little challenged, so bear with me. I get a combination of dark dried fruit, a cherry in particular. And, and some pepper notes, maybe black pepper. Right there, I don't feel like I get just a hint of maple in there I'm picking up. Wow, uh, that's interesting. Um, big and oaky, uh, spicy initially, building up to a crescendo in the finish where it gets spicier towards the end. Uh, the body is a tad thinner than I'd expect at 110 proof. But, but I, I love those big oak notes that run all the way through it. I'm not finding anything harsh or off-putting about this whiskey. Again, it's going to come down to a taste preference. You know, what do you like? What are you looking for? So, a uh, vanilla. Of course, you you got to talk about vanilla, uh, but there's not a lot. Not as much. Uh, it's not as pervasive as in most bourbons. I will say that. But maple, yeah, I feel like I'm getting a little maple in there. I feel like I'm getting some some light dark brown sugar notes because you just get that slight hint of molasses in there. Uh, and, and I'm getting some some maple-like sweetness in there as well. Uh, dark dried fruit, yeah, I feel like I'm picking up some raisin notes, some 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 dark, almost fruitcake-like cherry notes. Because you do kind of feel that, that breadiness in the malt. Finishing with some lingering spice. I'm going to say a combination of both black pepper and white pepper because it hits you at two different places on the palate. A little bit of cinnamon, but not again, not as much as typical. Uh, I feel like I'm finding some, some clove in there as well. 
It's interesting. Now, now I've got to get to the neat to figure out how much change the ice put it through. But it is very interesting. It ran about 50 bucks for, a, you know, for a 110 proof specialty. I didn't think that was too bad. And that's kind of my shtick anyway. Well, my, well, my shtick is generally finding the best whiskeys I can for about 40 bucks. Uh, but yeah, it, it is about, for me, it's, it's about finding bargains. It's about finding underrated, maybe undervalued whiskeys. Because we seem to be in an age where so many whiskeys are overvalued for whatever reason. They have better publicists. <laughs> Certain brands seem to have better publicists. I don't know. It seems like if you pay off the right whiskey writer, all of a sudden your $20 bottle of whiskey is now, uh, uh, now allocated. Um, your former $50 whiskey is now going for 100 bucks and 200 on secondary markets. Uh, it does seem to be about having a good publicist these days. And for me, I'm kind of looking for the unusual. I'm a working class guy, so I can't afford those $200 bottles of whiskey uh, on the regular <laughs> or even on special occasions for the most part. So I really do try to find the best I can at certain price points. So when I, when I go back and talk about the whiskeys again, it's, it's not necessarily were they good enough, were, were they worth the 50, is that of all the other whiskeys at 50 bucks, if I'm looking to spend 50 bucks for the whiskey, would I return to that one or would I look somewhere else? I'm not really in this beautiful bar in case you weren't sure. <laughs> Just found a nice little backdrop on my TV, got some light jazz in the background. I thought, yeah, there we go. Feels like the kind of place I'd order a whiskey like this in. You know, I'd be on vacation somewhere. Hey, let's try it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, cheers, man. I hope everybody's doing all right out there. I feel like I'm right there at that sweet spot where you get that right amount of cold, that right amount of water melted off in there. Where it brings all of those sugars to the surface. So I'm gonna I'm gonna recount that again. Uh, again, I still feel like I'm getting some maple. I feel like I'm getting some light brown sugar, not light in taste, but light in color, because you just get a very, you know, just just a light touch of, of of molasses in there. But I also feel like I'm getting some honey notes, just a, a delicate sweetness that runs all the way through it. So I'm going to show you this bottle one more time here. Oh. Made with broken oak staves, broken barrel whiskey, limited edition, the Casta Montiato. So I, I think I saw that movie, <laughs> the Casta Montiato. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so let me show you that bottle. I was hoping for there, there were, I was hoping there would be a story on the bottle to read, but there isn't. But that's the bottle. Again, it is 110 proof. I've had this bottle for, I don't know, probably about three months, I guess. I decided I was going to open a new one. I'm not even finished with everything that I have. <laughs> I like to open one every once in a while. It felt like time to open a new one anyway. It's got an interesting color, though. I was having a hard time wrapping myself around that color. I'm, I'm, I'm about half colorblind, so I'm not even sure what to call that. It's almost a uh, toffee. I'd say that I'm gonna call that a I'm gonna call that toffee color. <laughs> I'm gonna call that color English toffee. How about that? <laughs> Anybody want to disagree with me? Or I'm gonna call that English toffee. That's what it reminded me of. Anyway, so let's check the nose. In all honesty, I, I, as much as I do like the Glencairn or glasses like it. Um, for bourbon especially, I really prefer just, just, a a classic whiskey knee glass, but I put it in this one because I really wanted to concentrate the aromas for the first time. So it is a little bit different neat and that's not unusual. I mentioned toffee color, but I wasn't necessarily picking up a lot of toffee on the flavor over there. I mentioned some vanilla, but but here on the nose, I really feel some, again, some English toffee-like notes. 
I'm on some nutty notes. Um, I'm going to say toasted almond notes. Spice. Yeah, again, I, uh, I feel like I'm getting a, a mix of a black pepper and white pepper. Wow, yeah, see, wow, that's interesting. Uh, it, it is it is rather sweet initially, wow. Uh, it, it, it is a, a, a nice and interesting combination of sweet and spicy. Wow, uh, excuse me, sorry about that. Hope I didn't get any on you. Yeah, it is a nice combination of sweet and spicy. You do feel that vanilla more uh, neat. Uh, I'm not going to lie about that. So, uh, and try not to compare. I can't help myself sometimes. Let me try to focus just on this. I'll give you just what I get from this without comparing it to the Rocks version. Uh, yes, you get a nice amount of vanilla. A toffee-like sweetness. Uh, some toasted almond-like notes. Uh, a spice that runs all the way through its starting light and then building to a crescendo and a finish. Again, I feel like it's a combination of, of cracked black pepper and white pepper. You may get a little cinnamon notes, but, but the pepper seems to be more dominant for me. I also feel like you, you might find some clove in there as well, uh, but it does have this lingering spice. However, it doesn't become cloying because, well, you've got that sweetness kind of balancing out. The sweetness doesn't become cloying and neither does the pepper because they, they, they seem to, you know, balance each other out. It's a nice, nice blend of sweet and spicy. So for me, is this a buy again? Yeah, well, I mean, this is my first shot at it, so it may change as I get, you know, it, down to the middle of the bottle, but my initial response is yes. I, I do like I do like these combination of flavors. I do like how bold it is. I do like that spiciness. And although I made the comment, I am uh, gonna do it one more time. Although I made the comment, it felt like uh, you know uh, the body was light for one ten. I, I believe that's just because of the rocks, because the, the viscosity feels perfect here drinking it neat. Yeah, I do like it. I, again, I'm not feeling anything off-putting. I'm not feeling anything harsh. I think this whiskey drinks beautifully neat. And it, again, I know 50 bucks isn't a lot for some folks, but I'm a working class guy, so 50 bucks is an expensive whiskey for me. So would, would I would I highball this? No, under no circumstance would I highball this. Would I cocktail it? Yes, uh, and under again under certain circumstances, I think I would try a Manhattan with this because of the spice. I think I might try an old fashioned with it because of the spice. I don't think I'd whiskey sour it. My latest uh, uh, infatuation cocktail infatuation is a Boston sour. And I'm not sure if I would do that with this whiskey. Uh, okay, I'm going to say no, I wouldn't. But I may do it once just because I have the ingredients. <laughs> and that is my latest infatuation. But because of the spiciness, I, I do think it'd make a beautiful Manhattan. So there you go. I am Tom the Whiskey Whisperer. Whiskey Evangelist, full of whiskey drinker, purveyor of wisdom and... I forgot to mention in there, right? I got, felt it right there at the end. I forgot to mention that there's, you get a lot of dark dried fruits, uh, uh, cherry specifically, a lot of dark cherry notes, almost again like a fruitcake like notes because you feel those big bready malts in there um, uh, as well. Um, so some raisin, and you might feel some date and or fig. I'm trying the beer whisper. No, I'm not. I'm trying the whiskey whisper. See, I got excited and forgot what I was doing. I'm the whiskey whisper. Whiskey evangels. Prolific whiskey drinker. Prefer wisdom all around. Good guy. I got in a hurry and made a mistake there. But see, I'm not going to edit it out because I'm all about honesty. Cheers.